time once again for the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. This is an historic episode uh, in the series so far because this is going to be the final character draw we do the, of the entire series. We are down to just three games left of the semi semi finals of the preliminary rounds of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. There's this game that we're about to do. The game that follows it, which will close off both the French leg and this Ottoman Empire leg, and then there's the final leg of the the final game of the Bralty leg. Um, that's how it's looking, unless something happens that I didn't expect. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So we're going to start off the Ottoman Empire leg with our character draw. It's going to be a little different though, because this first game that we're doing is called Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets, which is a combination between shapeshifters, um, real people and also techno witches. So part of it, part of the game is going to, so the, the players are going to be robots and they're trying to figure out secrets about the other robots and the more secrets they discover the less robot the person becomes that they've discovered secrets of. They become more human which makes them weaker and thus easier to kill. Alright, so let's go ahead and do our draw. I'm not going to let you know anything about these people except for their names. Um, we're going to draw eight characters. It's going to be in two teams of four, and the teams will be decided later. I'll mix them up and do that randomly later. And then the game will be played, and four people will advance to Kriegbot, which will also have the two finalists from the French leg. And I'll explain that when we get to that video. Let's just focus on Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. All right, first draw is... Mall Santa. Alright, Mall Santa is going to be one of our final eight of the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Ottoman Empire leg, if I didn't make that clear. Next draw is Student. She doesn't have a name. Oh, oh no, no, Tinkerbell. Sorry, I was reading their, their occupations instead. So, alright, I'm going to go back. This guy, it's been so long since I've done this. This fellow's name is Smudge. Alright. And I guess you know he's a student, so maybe I'll just tell you their occupations too. That kind of works with the game anyway. And this person is Tinkerbell, and she is a student. Smudge is a mall Santa. I don't. I think I just said he was a student. Sorry. All right, two of eight. Six more to go. Just kind of jumping into this. I, I the the historicity of this moment is not fully hitting me right now because I just kind of turned on the camera and went. Um, but it's also kind of hitting me right now because I feel my heart a flutter. All right, next one is Skibby, and Skibby's a race car driver. All right, three of eight, five more to go. I miss telling you about them, but you're just going to have to find that out by knowing their secrets. All right, here we have Shell. Shell is a children's clothing designer. Four more to go. Chinky. Chinky is a constable. Constable Chinky. Three more to go. Here we have Dancing Bear. And Dancing Bear is a stockbroker. Dancing Bear. Six, two more. Now we have Jules. Jules is a member of Up With People. So maybe she's in a band. I think she's in a band called Up With People. I might have to check them out on, uh, maybe they have a Wikipedia page, or maybe you could check that out. Um, Up With People, probably um, a late 80s, early 90s band called Up With People. Final draw. Try not to think too much about gender, but I'm appreciative that there's more females because in the tournament as a whole, there tends to be more males, and I think that's that does lead to some imbalance. Um, in games as a whole, there tends to be more males, so it's nice to see so many females in this game of Paddlebots. We'll know your secrets. Final draw right here. This is a male. This is Danimal. He's a landscaper. I've actually seen him before. Um, he's a fun character. We're going to enjoy Danimal. All right, let's get started with Tattlebots. We'll know your secrets. 
Okay, so we have our teams divvied up. This is a team here, and this is a team here. Um, the teams you can kind of tell vi very visually based on their pieces. So um, this team here uh, consists of all Techno Witches, basically, uh, from the, the game Techno Witches. And this piece here, their playing pieces are going to be these little figures that I happen to have. Uh, further, this, this team here, which I guess we'll call the green team because they're represented by this kind of like muddy green whereas the other team is this blue. Um, this team here has their hit points and battery tracked by dice whereas the other team is going to use the tracks that came with the game shapeshifters. Having all eight on the tracks is a lot. Um, so what, what the game is basically, it's a game of shapeshifters for the most part except that their movement, which, so they're going to change forms, right? I'm going to assume you're familiar with shapeshifters. I did a review on it. You could watch that if you want. But you change forms on this chart, and um, the forms have different movement speeds, right? So we have movement is in the right-hand side there. So movement is basically going to be how many of these little things they get to, to put down and then move across the board. Now, if you notice here, we have our green muddy green here and our muddy blue here. You see these pieces kind of correspond to the team colors I chose. Um, so what that means is each of these is going to have a, uh, an assortment of these little icons here that came with the game shapeshifters. They're used for different um, scenarios, which is this isn't that scenario, but we have each player is going to have a shard, a staff, and a soul gem. And um, and those are going to be placed face down under these. So when, when a, an opposing team gets to one of these, they can turn it over and pick one, and whichever player that's, that's attached to is going to reveal two of their secrets. Okay. Now each, each real people card has ten items on it, right? Uh, we've already revealed two, one because I made a mistake and one because I intended to reveal their name. So their name and occupation is revealed for everyone. If they get one of their items, it's going to reveal another two. That's not all though, there's also a game effect. So in Shapeshifters, there's these different um, power levels. Now everyone's going to start as a warlock, not really, we'll, we'll like an ultimate bot. We'll say Megabot. Um, in this game's kind of mythos. So they're like fully robot. They're entirely robot. But as they get, um, each time one of their items is found, they're gonna go down in one. So that's gonna change their charge. That's how much uh, magic energy in shapeshifters, or in this game, like kind of like uh, electricity, I guess, <laughs> or power that they are able to generate each turn. That's gonna go down. How much they can store goes down how many different, how far they can shift on this track, that's what wisdom means here, that's going to go down, and it also their hit points is going to go down. Uh, so finding someone's secret is going to debilitate them. Um, and then if you find another one, they're going to go down again, and if you find a third one, they're going to go down again. And then their final two secrets are um, going to be held in these tower things here that each color has. Um, and I don't have a a chit for those, but if you discover those chits, if you discover all their chits, they're they're basically human, and they're you can just squash them. They don't have any of their sh their um, transformer powers. I mean, really, the Tattlebots are kind of a trans. They're like a battle bot or a GoBots knockoff. They're like even further a knockoff than um, GoBots were, uh, but they have secrets, and that's a new thing. So, you know. We, I don't think we're going to get any like licensing snafus at all. But they're transforming robots. They're battling it out. They only transform into natural things, which is kind of interesting. They don't have the creativity to come up with other things. And they, this is also a kind of a ruined world. There's no um, cars or anything like that that they can pattern their transformations off of. So I feel like I've explained it pretty well enough. People are going to be flying around. The ultimate goal is to kill off the other team. It's easier to do that if you know their secrets. Tattlebots, we'll know your secrets.
All right, so we're midway through our first turn, not midway, but uh, partially through our first turn. Nothing really that interesting has happened, but except that people have chosen their forms, and maybe that's interesting to you to see what they chose. Now, everyone's so far away from each other, they're not really worried about being in con conflict, so they're just kind of thinking ahead and exploring the game, because although I've played some shapeshifters, um, these people haven't. They know the rules. Um, but they also haven't played Tattlebox Will Know Your Secrets. So we've done a little bit of movement, and I, I'll, after I talk about what forms everyone chose, um, I'll show you some movement as Smudge makes his move. All right, so we have two people who chose birds, and you see the little key there, that's gray. There's a gray there. So that was um, Jules. Whoops, you shouldn't have looked at that. And I found a little bit about her band. I get uh, up with people is like this whole whole thing. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about Up With People, but you can you can um, look it up online, do some reading on Up With People. It's a pretty interesting phenomena. Uh, there's a documentary on it. I have not seen it. And then White, that was, uh, oh God, what's her name? Shell. I have their names listed here. Why do I even look at that? Shell, they both chose to be a bird. And Smudge, he became a bug. He's the only one who chose a bug. Danimal, just stayed human, man. And then we have Dancing Bear and, um, what's the cop's name? Chink, no, not Chinky. Yeah, Chinky. They both became rats. And then we also had two lizards in the form of Tinkerbell, which is right there, and Skibby. They both became lizards, maybe for different reasons. All right, so that's what everyone chose. Um, everyone chooses this simultaneously in case you don't know the game and then it's revealed so that's why I just write it down here um, so that I have the same visual picture that the player will have when they make their choice. I could just kind of do them all in order but I don't. I, I do try to kind of simulate the simultaneousness and then people can move and attack basically um, and movement. So right here we have uh, Smudge is about to move. His He's a bug. Bugs can fly, and they move six. And it's presumed, I believe, that all the insects are giant, except for the bug. So the bug is like a regular, like a fly. So then what we do is we remove his little clown figure here. We put this here. And I'm really bad at the techno witch's movement. I'm not very good at like imagining how things are gonna look. So earlier already, um, first movement actually, Tinkerbell, she she ran right into the water and then kind of had to struggle to shore. So she didn't get to go her full movement because I miscalculated. Uh, so we'll probably see a lot of that. And people will take damage if they run into any of these obstacles. Um, so here we go. And then so you just take them in line and you just add it on there. So we might be having an... Uh, curbing a lot more than I thought. He was kind of trying to go this way. <laughs> so that makes it makes it kind of fun. It's tedious, it's somewhat tedious to play this way, solitaire, because you have to do a lot of this kind of thing. And it makes movement take a lot longer than if I was just doing like standard hex to hex movement. But it um, will make things less predictable. People kind of go in the general direction. See, I Smudge and I thought he was going to kind of do a curve up through here and come up through um, these deep woods. Oh, I should talk about what the terrains are. So this brown, this is marsh, the blue is water, the green is light trees, and this is um, heavy trees. And this, I have no idea what that is. Um, all right, so that's how movement works. And then, then we kind of approximate the nearest hex that this is going on, because these aren't really designed for hexes, which is fine for me. And then have him keep his facing. So if it was going this way, he would be kind of facing that way. <laughs> he didn't really go anywhere near where he was trying to go. <laughs> so we just had our first collision. I feel like there's going to be a lot of these, which is going to make the game really amusing to me. Um, Jules, she's a bird, and birds get to move nine. So she's just going to go clear across here. But the problem is, is all of these um, techno witches things have a slight curve to them. And so she just kind of did a glancing blow off the side of this here. 
Um, can I get a good shot of that? Yeah, right there. Uh, she didn't do a full-on um, hit, so I don't think I'm going to do the full attack strength. Normally, the full attack strength that would, would, would just be her movement, so it would be 9, which is, you know, would be the 6 column here on our combat results table. But since it's a glancing blow, I don't know. I, I feel like, hmm... I guess we could we could half damage. Okay, so it's 4.5. We'll round that up to five, um, and she's going to be hurt. But since she she's still so much of a robot, her hit points are 18 to start. So she's not going to be killed by this. Two, and I think they can heal themselves too if they convert to something that has hands. So she only took five. That's pretty good considering the speed she was traveling at. So I think she'll stop right here. Oh, well, maybe she could keep going. Oh, maybe that should be the rule. They can, they take the damage, but they can keep going. They don't have to stop. So we'll, we'll say it was a six then. And so she takes six damage, but she can keep going. So we'll, we'll just finish her movement here. Kind of do like this. Like this. This and skittered to a stop, and I think that'll put her sitting right there. Okay, as the turn ends, we have our, our birds out here in the woods. One is a wounded bird, it hurt its wing. Um, we have a rat coming up here that's chinky, chinky, yeah, and Danimal, the human, sitting right over here. They were kind of heading over to intercept this bird, and then this bird came in and did this kind of and ended up over here. I think she kind of wanted to be a little bit more over here, but she learned from her um, her friend bird's mistake and really tried to avoid this thing here. Um, then over in the swamp, we have, it looks like a bird, but it's not a bird. That is a, what's her name? Skibby, that's a lizard over there. And we have a bug right here. And then over here we have a rat and a lizard kind of coming up this way. So you can kind of see how strategically people are trying to move. Um, they're kind of coming as a, as a group, as a pair, heading this way to be a, a strong threat. And then they kind of have another pairing. And um, the more colorful side, they're kind of in a, a, cl a, a closer net around their, their home base currently. We've done our shifting for the turn, our transforming, and the, the transformations are, have become a lot more interesting because especially as these two groups get closer to each other, they want to get in forms that can fight, whereas before it was more about mobility and conserving of power. They still have to conserve power, but not so much. In some ways the choices are less interesting <coughs> when players are, are the highest level of shifter because they can shift further. They have more energy with which to shift. So what did everyone become? Well, we'll start with the, these two over here. Dancing Bear there, she is a bird. She learned from her partners that birds go fast. And then Tinkerbell, she's a Jesus lizard. She was a lizard before, and now she's a Jesus lizard. They also go fast, and they can run across water, which is fun. Um, the other two on the blue team there, we have Jules. Uh, who, as you remember last time, uh, got injured. She bumped into that, that building there. And so she turned into an ogre, which is decent at fighting, but also has hands. And if you have hands, you can use what are in shapeshifter spells, but our, what are in Tattlebots will know your secrets, operations. So she's going to use an operation to repair herself and hopefully just keep repairing. And hopefully for her, the others don't get to her and mess her up before she's fixed herself up, though it'll take a while. She's, I mean, she's probably not going to get back to maximum health. Um, Shell, she's going to try to defend her while advancing. She turned into a rock, uh, not the, the, the stone, but like the giant bird. Um, on these fellows' side, we have Smudge. He became a giant wasp. So we might see a giant wasp versus rock fight. That's if they can manage to hit each other, you know, with the steering and everything. <laughs> Could be a lot of accidents and misses. Um, Chinky, he's a tiger right there. And then the Danimal, 
he became a rhino, so he's going to charge up there. Um, that left Skibby to just kind of hang out. She's stayed a lizard, and she's going to be building up power and just ready to defend these things if those two get over there here. We have our first combat of the game, and it's an even match. Smudge, who's a giant wasp, versus Shell the Rock. Uh, they have the exact same stats in terms of attacking, though I think the giant wasp is maybe better, it flies faster or something, I don't know. But it doesn't matter for this combat. So Smudge will attack first, and he's got 3 minus 2, so he's on the 1 column here. And he got a 6, that's very good for him. Actually, Shell should have attacked first. Oh well, we'll say that was still Smudge's. So 3 damage to Shell, she's gonna, she attacked first, so that was his counterattack. And then two, so still pretty even. They, they both chipped away a little bit at each other's respective hit points. So here's the situation as we go into the last turn, or the last phase of the turn. Um, we have Danimal and Clinky, Chinky, Chinky, coming on fast against um, Jules here, who is the wounded, wounded bird. Um, she's now an ogre. With, a, with an injured arm from bonking into this thing here. Um, the animal could also threaten this, this combat that's going on. He's kind of equidistant there. So it's kind of a three on two situation where um, down this way, we've got Tinkerbell right there approaching, um, sorry, it takes uh, Skibby. Skibby, yeah. It's sometimes hard for me to remember these names. So now it's Dancing Bear's turn, and she's got to decide what she's going to do about all this. So she's got... These people seem to be in trouble, right? But if she goes this way and helps out, then that's going to create a, a good bit of weakness for the green team if they can deal with Skibby and then get into their their boxes. Um, she Her inclination is to help out her friends who... Um, seem to be in trouble, but she's also got her eye on the prize, so she, she kind of has three different options, and I've kind of had her go in different ways, but I think I've decided what she's going to do. She could go this way and kind of join um, Tinkerbell over there. She could try to thread tightly through this thing, which I don't think I could do with my abilities, but she maybe is more confident than I am. Um, or she could kind of take a middle path and sort of threaten both zones. And I think that's ultimately what she's going to do, is take the middle path. So she's going to try and get to around here, maybe even further, um, and see what happens. <laughs> so a pretty hilarious flight path as a result. She narrowly missed hitting a couple of obstacles, uh, but ended up okay. Not quite where she wanted to be, almost back where she started. So let's, let's take the trip, because this is a big part of the fun for this. I said it was a Maybe a little bit tedious to have to do this every time someone moves, but I'm appreciating it more and more. I don't know if that will stay constant, uh, depending on how long the game goes, but I'm enjoying the kind of almost randomness due to my own ineptitude with this um, type of movement uh, that this, this brings into bear. So here we go. Generally, the further they go, the worse I am, which makes the birds particularly problematic. But she, then in the, I guess she's flying above the water, is what she's doing right there. 